I mean, you'll get your test soon, or I hope soon. I'm waiting to get, you know, stuff from online students, and then I'll grade it all at once. Um, but today, we'll just uh, continue onwards. Once again, Zoom continues to baffle me. There we go. So yesterday, well, not yesterday. Yesterday was the test. But earlier this week, <laughs> we looked at the integral test. And the integral test is a convergence. Well, let's say convergence slash divergence, because it can show them both. The integral test says that, I mean, there are some conditions you need your functions to be positive, stuff like that, but those conditions being satisfied, it says that if we're in our usual situation where our series is defined using a formula, then a sum converges if and only if the integral converges. And where we start doesn't really matter, but it's the sum up to infinity and an improper integral up to infinity. And I mean, this is this is logically implied by that if and only if, but it's better to be clear than minimal. So I'll write down on the board that just like this test can give us convergence, this test can give us divergence. And it's a nice straightforward test, but it has problems that we talked about. Um, the most significant, or at least the most, um, the easiest to summarize in a five second clip being that we're very rarely going to be able to take the integrals of series that we actually care about in any kind of real world setting. So this is a test. It's one test of several. We should look at a few more tests. And the really important tests that are still to come are, are the ratio test and the limit comparison test and maybe the alternating series test. So there are a few to come that are pretty important. Right now, I want to talk about the regular old comparison test. That looks very weird to me. Does comparison have two S's? Well, you know what I mean anyway. Comparison, comparing stuff. So the comparison test as, I mean, let, let me say what it is, and then we can talk about the pros and the cons of it. The comparison test, just like the integral test, 
needs everything to be positive. Let's see. And the comparison test says, suppose you have a series and you know that series converges. And there are a few um, series that we know converge. We know that geometric series converge if the ratio R is less than one. We know that P series converge if P is greater than one which is uh, maybe a little unfortunate that in one case, something being less than one causes convergence. In the other case, something being greater than one causes convergence. Try not to get those confused. So anyway, suppose we know that a series converges and then we have another series. And the terms in this new series are all smaller than the terms in the converging series. Then, this new series also converges. <laughs> and our intuitive understanding of this test, something that is less than a finite number is also finite. I hope, I mean, we're not doing a bunch of formal proofs in this class, but I hope that statement is intuitive. So the comparison test, um, this is, let's say, let's call it part one of the comparison test. Um, the comparison test, like the integral test, can give you divergence. And again, it works in a way that I hope is kind of intuitive. Let's say that a series diverges, and let's say that a second series is bigger than the divergent series. Then the bigger series also diverges. And again, we're not planning to offer any kind of formal proof here, but um, I hope this is intuitive. Um, the normal way to think about divergent series is that they're too big. You add these terms together and you get infinity. So if you have a bunch of terms that make infinity, and then you have a bunch of even bigger terms, well, Something that's bigger than infinity is also infinite. Infinity plus one, as it were. So that's the comparison test. And the comparison test um, 
in my opinion, has some pros, but honestly, mostly cons. We're going to look at a test um, very shortly, either today or tomorrow, that is much easier to use, I think, called the limit comparison test. But before we start being all negative and talking about its cons, let's try to get some pros on the board. Well, I've said this already, but to me, the comparison of all of the comparison tests we're going to look at in this class, sorry, what am I saying? All the comparison tests of all the convergence and divergence tests that we're going to look at in this class, to me, the comparison test makes the most sense. Smaller than finite is finite, bigger than infinite is infinite. So it's extremely intuitive. It can work when we have factorials. Um, this is something, again, because of the way, the order that material gets presented in these textbooks, this probably doesn't seem like some enormous pro at the moment, but when we start actually using these series, we're going to find that almost every series that matters has a factorial in it. And that's that's kind of the one of the great failings of the integral test because you can't integrate factorials. But you can um, sometimes make comparisons with them. But it has some cons as well. Because of the way the comparison test is set up, or maybe we should say because the comparison test is really two tests, a divergence test and a comparison test, This is the only test where you have the already no, or at least suspect. whether the series converges or diverges before you you was it. And I might summarize that by saying that it's not mechanical. Well, maybe only isn't perfectly true, but it's it's the test where this becomes the biggest issue. With the integral test, you take an integral and you get an answer. Uh, with, I mean, I know we haven't seen it, but with the ratio and the root test, we take a limit and we get an answer. With the limit comparison test, we take a limit, we get an answer. The limit comparison test does have 
does require some intuition. We'll get to that later. With the alternating series test, you ask if a series satisfies two conditions, and if it does, you get an answer. The comparison test, is very labor intensive by comparison because think how you'd use the comparison test. You have a series. These terms are positive. The series might converge, it might diverge. We're not sure. To show that the series converges, We need to find a new series, B sub n, such that these B sub n's are bigger than the A sub n's. And this series converges. If we can find a bigger convergent series, we'll get convergence. To show divergence, We need to find a new series, but the series we find needs to be smaller and it needs to diverge. Sorry, I slept. It's something to my back. Um, so we're, to use the convergence test, we need to find a new series, and it needs to be either bigger than or smaller than the series we're working with. But which? Well, if the series we're working with converges, we need to find a bigger series that also converges. If the series we're looking at diverges, we need to find a smaller series that also diverges. And that's why I say that to use this test, we really need to have some suspicions as to whether the series converges or diverges. Um, otherwise, we're just sort of messing around at random. Make something bigger, see if it works. Make something smaller, see if it works. And the other on is that it's often deeply unclear how to find this second series. Is. 
it requires a lot of experimentation and messing around. So let's see how this works. And hopefully both the pros and the cons will be illustrated. Let's ask ourselves, does, and now I'm going to have to think and come up with a pretty straightforward example. There's one, divided by x. Don't copy this in my notes, in your notes. I need to think about this. Um, I think this is the example I want to do. But if it's not the example I want to do, then that's fine too. We'll get a perfect example of the kind of challenges that show up when you are doing this test. So does one over X plus one converge or diverge? And we have, we try to think if we have any intuition about this. Of the series we've looked at, one over X plus one is really similar to one of the series we talked about Monday, which, which was what series? Kind of similar to the harmonic series. It is. In fact, it's, uh, I would go so far as to say that it's very similar to the harmonic series. And in fact, we could, um, we can say that this series diverges without using any test. I mean, that would kind of defeat the point as an example, but if we're going like from one to infinity, this is one over two plus one over three plus one over four plus one over five and so on. The only reason this isn't identical to the harmonic series is that we don't have a one in front. And one of the theorems we said was that if you add or subtract or delete a finite number of terms at the beginning of the series, it doesn't affect convergence and divergence. So since the harmonic series diverges, scribbling out a single term doesn't affect that and this series also diverges. But let's try to do this as an exercise with the comparison test. This looks similar to the harmonic series and the harmonic series diverges. So I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to guess that one over X plus one diverges. So how do we show divergence? What X? Sorry, I mean, 
x is, we can say phi x is going from one to infinity, but if that, if that caused confusion, I apologize. We really don't want to be using x. Let's call it a. Um, so to show divergence, we need this series to be bigger than some new series such that the new series diverges. And to use the comparison test, we're not just going to start guessing series at random. That would be madness. We are, um, we're going to work with the series we have. We're going to try to shrink these terms. We have addition. Yes, we have addition. So we're going to have, try to shrink this term such that the new and smaller series diverges. And this was not the example I was trying to put on the board, but that's fine. We'll we're still going to be able to solve this just with a little more work. And there are, in, in cases where we're using the comparison test, it's basically always going to be fractions. There are two ways to shrink. a fraction. We can make the top of the fraction smaller, or we can make the bottom of the fraction bigger. Like one tenth is less than two tenths, but one tenth is bigger than one one hundredth. So, um, look at that fraction, 1 over n plus 1, and now we just have to mess around. I think I might have written that phrase explicitly on the board. There is no, um, no, no, no real guidelines other than that we think we're trying to shrink the fraction. So we think we want to do one of those two things. Um, making the top smaller doesn't seem super hopeful to me because the top is already really small. I mean, one is going to be less than n, less than n squared, less than the logarithm of n. Um, one is already a small number. 
So we ask, can we make the bottom of that fraction bigger? And the answer is that, well, we absolutely can, but where the, where the messing around comes in is that we need to both make the denominator bigger and get a divergent series. Like n plus one, at least for large values of n, n plus one is going to be less than n squared. But, but we haven't solved the problem. Because this new series that we've created converges. And being bigger than a finite number doesn't tell you anything. You could converge, you could be a larger finite number, or you could diverge. Infinity is bigger than a finite number. So, because I, because I have taught this class many times and also took it myself, I have, you know, sort of an intuition about what I think is going to work here. Um, what, what stands out to me is that n plus one is going to be less than or equal to n plus n, because one is less than or equal to n. Remember how this works. We are starting at one, and then we're increasing. So one over n plus one is greater than one over two n which is one half times one over n. And then we had a theorem, it must have been last week we saw it, and that theorem said that constants like one half don't change convergence or divergence. So one over n diverges. So throwing in a one half doesn't change that. And one over two n diverges. And now the inter the the comparison test works because we've seen that the series we're interested in is bigger than something that diverges, the comparison test says, all right, something that's bigger 
then infinity is infinity. So this thing that we're looking at um, diverges as well. And again, you know, I, I'm probably making this seem easier than it is. And that's, to, again, that's just because I've seen so many of these problems by now um, that I see n plus one and I say, oh, that's, of course, that's less than that, but, but it really isn't an oh, of course kind of thing. It's something that you can spend 10 minutes fighting with in a homework exercise. So it's because of this, what I'm calling messing around, where you know you have to change the series, but you're not quite sure what to do with it necessarily. That I, I, I use the phrase, um, deeply unclear here. It's because of that that the comparison test can be kind of hard to use in practice. Um, let's look at the natural logarithm of n over n cubed. And let me pull, let me pull Desmos up because we're going to want it. So, uh, no bad answers here, uh, does, but does anybody have any thoughts about whether this might converge or diverge? I feel like it's gonna converge because the n squared on the bottom last time converged. Okay, that's um that's correct. This is going to converge. The question then becomes, can we show that using the comparison test? And the observation you made, which was good, was that when we didn't have a natural log, when we just had the n to a power, this, um, this converged. This is a P series, and it converges. Of course, we do have the natural log, and the sort of, the argument that I want to make here is that n is going to infinity, the natural logarithm, I mean, this is sort of the informal argument that I'm making. I'm not using a, a formal test yet, but when I look at this, I say, well, one over n cubed would um would converge. We don't quite have that. We have the natural log instead of one. But the natural logarithm is a really small and slow growing function. So maybe the series still converges. So if we're going to show convergence, we need a bigger series that 
converges and making a series bigger, just like making it smaller, there are sort of two things we could do here. We could make the top bigger, or we could make the bottom smaller. So this is less clear than the previous example. That is what I call the previous example clear. There are all kinds of asterisks, but at least in the previous example, I have a less here. In the previous example, I was able to look at the fraction and say, well, there's not a lot we can do to this one. So we should probably be messing around with the denominator. Here, we've got stuff in the top and in the bottom. So it's not even immediately clear which of these we should be doing. Maybe we should be doing both of them. I mean, and again, I, it's sort of cheating. One, because I've done this a million times. Two, because I came up with the example and wouldn't have put it on the whiteboard if I had no idea what to do. Um, making the denominator smaller. I mean, there are obvious ways of doing this. But we also need to come up with a series that's either a harmonic series or a P series or a geometric series, because though because we need to know whether the new series converges or diverges. So, I mean, what I'm trying to get at here is we could certainly write this down it's a true statement um we're making the bottom smaller but if i if i don't know whether ln over n cubed converges or diverges i also don't know whether ln over n squared converges or diverges so how have how have i improved anything i i haven't so what i'm going to notice, and this is experience talking, but it's also something you should kind of understand. I mentioned that the natural log is small, that it grows slowly. The natural log grows so slowly that we could replace it with virtually anything. And it will have the effect of making the top bigger. In particular, the natural logarithm of n is smaller than n by itself. I am, here we go. Ln x versus x, you see this natural log curve is always below the straight line. So, 
because of fact. I think I might have had my equal sign my vest and sign pointed in the wrong way when I was talking about messing around with the denominator. This inequality is true because we are making the top bigger. N over N cubed is one over n squared. And I'm running out of space, but one over n squared is a p series with p equal to two. And a P series where P is greater than one converges. So we have what we need. We found a bigger series that converges. And if the bigger series is finite, bless you. Thank you then certainly the smaller series is finite. And the comparison test gives us convergence. Okay, tomorrow we'll talk about the limit comparison test, which requires a little intuition, but at least in my opinion, is usually a lot easier to work with than the comparison. Yes, and I will see you then.